practice. Morningstar Descent to Dead Rock is a Hungarian first-person sci-fi point-and-click adventure game from Red Herring Labs. Though it was released on Steam and mobile devices in 2015, Morningstar began life six years ago as a free-to-play Flash game. This subtitled release is more or less the same game, but with an impressive coat of polish on it. Red Herring's website claims that their main goal is to develop classical point-and-click adventure games with engaging stories and high production quality. Coining the slogan, every game has a story. Yeah, tell that to- Looks like a developer after my own heart. Let's see if they manage to find what's left of it, because I sure can't. It pains me to say that, despite being named after the light of the world, Morningstar doesn't have much to do with he who will one day ascend above the stars of God. This game takes place far in the future, where apparently much of the galaxy, and perhaps other galaxies, have been explored. Not much detail is given about these characters or the world they live in, but what we do know is that a spaceship named Morningstar crash lands on an alien planet, killing all but two of the crew on board, Powell and Captain Novak. These two just don't get along, and when they're forced to work together to escape a hostile alien planet, the comedy is out of this world. Novak gets a scrape on the way down, so Powell heads out onto the surface of Dead Rock to scavenge for parts. Morningstar perhaps inadvertently acts as more of a short study on the love-hate relationship between these two, as they try to survive and make it back home. There does seem to be a bigger, overarching story at play, but next to zero attention is paid to it, and Powell could apparently care less about the previous inhabitants of the planet and the Bermuda Triangle-like properties it possesses. This guy couldn't be more unemotional about the severity of his situation. He's far more concerned with getting the ship up and running than understanding why any of this is happening, or what they've gotten themselves into. There was also this dead alien you come across, and Powell says, Holy crap, this corpse is not human. It looks like it was stabbed to death. It's still warm, so it must have happened recently. Uh-oh, that means that whoever did this could still be around. But what happened to that? Like, we know. Was was there a guy? Did a guy do this? I didn't see a guy. I don't know. They never say anything. I all right. Despite claiming to aim for engaging stories, Morningstar's plot is a very thin slice of very traditional and familiar sci-fi, which is a shame because the opening and ending sequences are actually pretty intense and exciting. So much so that they feel like they're from a different game altogether. If you want to engage me, I have to know who these guys are, and I have to feel like they are human beings. And that was not the case. While they do share some chuckle-worthy banter... Thanks, Novak. And still catch it to you. Yeah, make me say it. Oh, just get to work. They are pretty one-dimensional, and I don't feel like they changed or overcame anything in the end. It's not a great story, but it kept my attention for the two hours it took to complete it. I wish I could have learned more about Dead Rock and more about Powell. I just want to connect with this guy. I mean, I mean, I'm cool, right? Like, like I'm into, I'm into all kinds of cool stuff. Like, I like space and, you know, traveling to space. You know, like I haven't done it, but like I totally would. I don't know. Um, you know, I don't, I don't get why this guy thinks he's like better than me. Morningstar is a pretty accessible and petite classic adventure game. It's a good entry point or gateway into the more traditional and challenging stuff. You won't come across too many puzzles. The gameplay puts a focus on collecting items and fashioning them into makeshift repairs for your ship. When faced with an obstacle, you'll more than likely have what you need to progress in your inventory. Is Powell, is Powell an engineer? How does he know how to repurpose alien technology? Like this, combined with his calm as fuck demeanor, makes it seem like this perilous adventure is a minor inconvenience for Powell. You don't really cover a whole lot of ground in your exploring, which seems antithetical to the idea of exploring, but in any case, you get a neat map to hop to the handful of locations you'll find. Should you find yourself at a loss as to what you should be doing, you can radio Captain Novak. His hints vary from shockingly specific to completely useless. To be honest, this is a very easy game to comprehend. You could probably finish this game in about two hours, unless you're some kind of asshole. Hey, you remember way back when I called you an asshole? I'm sorry about that, that wasn't cool. While the logic of what you're doing is not always easy to follow, you're given enough help that it doesn't matter much anyway. I was like, but why would this doll open a computer controlled door? And the game's like, look, just do- I gotta figure out the voice of this computer. 
I mean, the game, what is the game? The game's gonna sound like a computer. Look, just do it. You clearly don't get it, but that's what needs to be done. And I was like, all right, I'm not loving the sass though. And he was like, love? What is love? And I said, I don't know. Morningstar's makeover does look a whole lot better, but it's still visually stuck in the early 2000s. Which is by no means a turnoff for me, but I can't expect everyone to find it as charming as I do. Since the game takes place from the perspective of Powell's spacesuit helmet, the interface has an appropriate sci-fi feel. It's a nice touch. Objects and environments often look a little simple and there is a noticeable lack of ambient animation. You know, the little touches of animation that make a game comprised of static images feel alive. This can be something as simple as a flickering light bulb or a spinning fan. Stuff like that is just good practice for this genre. I usually pick a scene with ambient animation for my end slates if anyone gave a shit! The cutscenes are pretty good though, so maybe that's where all their effort Fuck. The cutscenes are pretty good though, so maybe that's where all their effort or money went. I'm otherwise fine with the way this game looks. It's better than a lot of indie games out there. The music doesn't demand much attention and does its job, for the most part. I love the opening track because while it is an exciting song, it has a lot of those MIDI orchestra instruments that I feel like I haven't heard in a decade or so. Now, the voice acting is interesting. Both Powell and Novak are our only voiced characters, and they are so amazingly monotone and disinterested in what they're saying that it was frequently humorous for me. Hearing someone speak words that were clearly meant to be said with emotion and saying it without a trace of it. No act of pal. Come in. Finally. This is pal. I read you. Listen. I'm injured. It's really bad. What? What is it? In the opening of the game, his friend is dead. His dead body is laying there. This guy is dead. That's a dead man. That is a man who is dead. He's a dead guy. Hibernation chamber. Looks like poor Johansson didn't make it. I should have a second look at him after I manage to open the chamber from the medical room. This is a dead guy that you were just on a space adventure with. I figured you'd emote a little more than looks like Johansson's biological functions have stopped, most likely due to some trauma sustained during our emergency landing that resulted in a terminal injury. One traditionally feels a sense of unpleasantness or emotional pain in the presence of death. I feel none of these. In the grand scheme of things, his death will matter very little. In the years to come, even his children will forget details as significant as the sound of his voice. This arouses me sexually. Morningstar is another quick fix of classic point and click style adventure games, and a good gateway into the genre, but hardly a sterling example of how great an adventure game can be. It would probably feel more at home on a mobile device, because it doesn't demand much of your attention, and it isn't the most atmospheric or immersive title out there. Its story is pretty by the numbers and vague, despite having the pieces of something potentially interesting. It controls fine and won't eat up too much of your time by being challenging or fun. It looks great, sounds great, I would have preferred if human beings did the voiceover work instead of soulless robots. <laughs> that is, sorry, that's a ridiculous thing to say. There's no such thing as a soul, is there? If there was, I'd be the last person to know. Beloved nephew away, my poor Ned, forgive.